This is Football Profile and today we look at Birmingham City in under 60 seconds. Born in 1875, the club was founded by a group of cricketers calling themselves Small Heath Alliance. But in 1905, the club would change its name to Birmingham. The club spent its early years in a variety of kits, playing often in whatever was available, but by 1901 they had changed to the Royal Blue they remained famous for. In 1906 they would move into St Andrews, where they still play today, hosting 29,409 on match days. They contest the second city derby with Aston Villa, with the first match being played 142 years ago, it's one of England's oldest. With an intensity and ferocity that rivals any in Britain. The greatest era for the club was in the late 50s and early 60s, where they would make history, becoming the first English club to play in Europe. They would reach the final of the Fairs Cup in 1960 and 61, losing out to Barcelona and Roma, respectively. In 1963, they would achieve their greatest feat by winning the League Cup against fierce rivals Villa. Despite repeating their League Cup glory in 2011, the club have now spent 10 years out of the top flight. A historic and well-supported club, it would be great to see them return to the top, bringing back one of the best rivalries to the Premier League. This is Football Profile and today we look at Burnley in under 60 seconds. Originally a rugby club called Burnley Rovers, the club was founded in 1882 when its members decided they would change codes and start playing football. The following year they would move into Turf Moor, where they still play today hosting 21,944 match days. The club spent its early years in many different kits, playing in green for a notable period, but in 1910 they would adopt the claret and blue they remain famous for. They contest the East Lancashire Derby with Blackburn Rovers. First played in 1884, it's one of England's oldest, whose history can be felt in the atmosphere on match days. The the club saw good success in its early years, claiming the FA Cup in 1914 and the league title in 1921. But the club's greatest era is seen as the post-war period, where they would continually challenge for honours. In 1960, they would go on to win the league title, implementing a total football style of play that mesmerised fans and their opponents. As founder members of the Football League, Burnley's historical significance speaks for itself. Back in the top flight, the Sean Dyche renaissance continues, and it will be interesting to see where the club goes next. This is Football Profile, and today we look at Nottingham Forest in under 60 seconds. Born in 1860, the club was founded by members of a local bandy and shinty club who wanted to adopt the new association football rules. From its formation, the club would adopt red, choosing the bright Garibaldi red immortalised by the Italian revolutionaries during their fight for unification. In 1898, they would move into the city ground, where they still play to this day, hosting 30,446 on match days and frightfully close to their crosstown rivals. Forrest's greatest era would come in the late 70s and early 80s, where led by the iconic Brian Clough, the club achieved the impossible. Newly promoted to the top flight, they would win the league at their first attempt, dethroning the incredible Liverpool side of the time. The following year, they would beat the best of Europe, and claim the European Cup title against Malmo. In 1980, even more incredibly, they would defend their crown. Defeating Hamburg and the Bernabeu, they would win back-to-back -back European titles, creating history. Forrest's current situation seems a far cry from the late 70s. Changing ownership and poor business decisions have created instability. Forest history, however, speaks for itself, and their return to the top would be welcomed by most in the English game. This is Football Profile, and today we look at Leeds United in under 60 seconds. Founded in 1919, the club is seen as a spiritual successor of Leeds City, a club that was forced to disband due to financial irregularities. In the same year, they would move into Elland Road, where they still play today, hosting 37,792 on match days. The club would spend over 40 years in different kit colours, predominantly in blue and yellow, before 1961, when they adopted the all-white that they remain famous for. Leeds strong Longest rivalries with Man United, with Alex Ferguson famously saying that no fixture matches the atmospheric levels of the Leeds game. The club's greatest era is without doubt the late 60s and early 70s. Led by the legendary Don Revy, the club would amass the majority of their major honours. The all-conquering team would claim two league titles, finishing second five times, one FA Cup and a League Cup, leading many to call them the greatest team of all time. They would also be a force in Europe, winning the Fairs Cup twice in 68 and 71, being losing finalists in both the Cup Winners' Cup and the European Cup. Leeds United are one of England's greatest clubs clubs, whose achievements speak for themselves. Recent years have been tougher, but with the return of the Premier League under Bielsa, it'll be interesting to see what the future may hold. This is Football Profile, and today we look at Newcastle United in under 60 seconds. Founded in 1892, the club was a merger of two of Newcastle's dominant sides, West End and East End. In the same year, they would move into St James's Park, the old home of West End, where they still play today, hosting 52,305 on match days. The club would spend their early years in red shirts, inherited from East End, until 1894, when they would don the black and white stripes for the first time. They contest the Tyneweir Derby with Sunderland. The match is one of Europe's fiercest, epitomised by passionate and sometimes violent fans. The Toon are the ninth most successful club in England, with four league titles, six FA Cups and one UEFA Cup. Their greatest era is coming in the 1900s when they won three league titles in five years, and the early 1950s when they would go on to win three FA Cups. Newcastle's recent history has been more difficult though. A 52-year drought characterised by near misses in 96 and 97, and a questionable owner stifling the club's ambitions. Newcastle are without doubt one of England's biggest clubs. 
clubs. Despite fortunes not favouring them of late, they maintain arguably the strongest fan base in the country, with a heritage and history that is the envy of any in the land. This is Football Profile, today we look at Sunderland in under 60 seconds. Born in 1879, they were founded by teacher James Allen as a club for his colleagues to join. The club would spend its early year in dark blue kits, before changing to red and white halves. In 1887, they would adopt the red and white stripes they remain famous for. In 1898, they would move into Roker Park, spending 99 years until 1997, when they would move into the Stadium of Light, where they still play today, hosting 49,000 on match days. They contest the time weird derby of Newcastle, one of Britain's most intense fixtures defined by its passionate fan bases and dramatic moments. The club's greatest era was in the very early years of the pro game. Powered by a team of mostly Scotsmen, they would be declared champions of the world in 1895, winning five of their six league titles before the First World War. One of their most famous moments would come in 1973, when as a second tier club, they would win the FA Cup, defeating the legendary Leeds side in the final, considered one of the greatest shocks in English footballing history. Sunderland are a massive club who played a vital role in the early days of the English game. Recent times have been a lot tougher, and we hope that they will soon return to the top with brighter times ahead. This is Football Profile and today we look at Aston Villa in under 60 seconds. Born in 1874, the club was founded by members of Aston Villa Wesleyan Methodist Church Cricket Club looking for a winter sport to play. The club spent its early years in a variety of kit colours, emblazoning many early shirts of the Lion Rampant due to their deep connection with the Scottish community of Birmingham. But in 1888 they would adopt the claret and blue shirts they remained famous for. In 1897 they would move into Villa Park, where they still play today, hosting 42,749 on match days. They contest the second city derby with Birmingham City. First played in 1879, it is one of England's oldest, defined by its atmosphere and ferocity of its fans. Villa are England's seventh most successful club, with seven league titles, seven FA Cups and five League Cups, as they dominated the early years of the English game. Their greatest moment would come in the early 80s, where after 70 years without a title, they would claim the league, going into Europe the following year, where they would achieve the incredible by winning the European Cup. Villa are undoubtedly one of England's biggest clubs, with an incredible history that stretches almost 150 years. After some tougher years outside the top flight, a new era is dawning at Villa Park, and it will be interesting to see what their future May hold. This is Football Profile, today we look at Wolves in under 60 seconds. Founded in 1877, the club was originally known as St Luke's FC, founded by pupils of a school of the same name. In 1879, they would adopt the Wanderers name after merging with another local club. The club spent its early years in mainly red and white stripes, until an unforeseen kit clash with Sunderland prompted a change. In 1891, they would adopt the black and gold, still playing in variations of these colours to this day. In 1889, they would move into Molyneux, where they still play today, hosting 32,050 on match days. Wolves contest the Black Country Derby with West Brom, declared one of the most intense in England with a long history dating back to the formation of the Football League. Wolves' greatest era would come in the 1950s, where led by Stan Cullis and legendary captain Billy Wright, the club would win all three of their league titles, finishing second the further three times. The team would be declared the unofficial champions of the world, regularly defeating Europe's best in friendlies. These international club matches inspiring UEFA to start the European Cup. As a founding member of the Football League, Wolves are vital to the game's history. An era like the 50s is hard to replicate, but with new ambitious owners and improving results, who knows what their future may hold. This is Football Profile and today we look at the history of Everton in under 60 seconds. Born in 1878, the club was originally called St Domingo FC, named after the Methodist Church in the Everton area of Liverpool. But by 1879, the club had fully adopted the Everton name. Everton played in a myriad of kits in their early years, but by 1901, they were wearing the royal blue shirts they remained famous for. In 1892, they would move into Goodison Park, where they still play to this day, hosting 39,414 on match days. Everton contests the Merseyside Derby with Liverpool, a match famous for intensity, but also with its familiar nature, with families being split down the middle by who they support. Everton are England's 8th most successful club, with 9 league titles, 5 FA Cups and 1 Cup Winners' Cup. In the 20s and 30s, the club would win 3 of their league titles, spearheaded by Dixie Dean, who would score 380 goals in 400 games for the club, scoring 60 in one league season. The 80s also brought glory, with 2 league titles and the European Cup Winners' Cup, defeating Rapid Vienna 3-1 in Rotterdam. From pioneers of the professional game in England, and 140 years laden with triumphs, Everton have a massive history, with a fan base and heritage that define the best of English football. This is Football Profile and today we look at Portsmouth in under 60 seconds. Founded in 1898, the club was formed by a group of businessmen to save football in the city after all other local clubs had folded. In 1899 they would move into Fratton Park, where they still play today, hosting 20,620 on match days, a stadium with one of the most unique entrances in British football. The club spent its early years in pink and maroon kits, but in 1912 they would adopt the blue shirts they remain famous for. They contest the South Coast Derby with Southampton, an intense fixture born out of the competing dockyard traditions and fuelled by the 
economic divide between the cities. The club's first major honour would come in 1939, where they would win the FA Cup, but greater things were yet to come. A decade later, the team would claim league glory, becoming champions of England. Repeating the feat a year later, they would become one of the few clubs to win back-to-back -back titles. After decades without any honours, the club returned to the Premier League in 2003, going on to claim the 2008 FA Cup, defeating Cardiff in the final. The club has faced tough times recently, competitively and financially, but their loyal fans will hope that the return up the leagues isn't far away and good fortune can return to Pompey in the future. This is Football Profile and today we look at the history of Stoke City in under 60 seconds. Born in 1863, the club was founded by pupils of Charterhouse School, apprentices of the North Staffordshire Railway. In 1878, the club would move into the Victoria Ground until 1997 when they would take up residence in the Britannia Stadium, hosting 30,089 on match days. The club would spend their early years in many kit colours, but it wouldn't be until 1908 when they would fully adopt the red and white stripes they remained famous for. Stoke contested the Potteries Derby with Portville, one of England's oldest dating back to the 1800s. The 30s and 40s are seen as the club's greatest era, spearheaded by England legend Sir Stanley Matthews, only the outbreak of World War II would end the club's title ambitions. After over a hundred years of near misses, the club would finally take the 1972 League Cup, defeating a Chelsea side that was fresh off Cup and European glory. In 2008, their long absence from the top flight would end, bringing one of England's oldest clubs back to the attention of the world, and despite their recent relegation, the club remains buoyant. Stoke's history is deeply entwined with the national game. After 158 years of ups and downs, they are still going strong with a fan base and heritage that is a credit to the English game.